In this video, we're going to finish off Unit 2, Lab 2 by figuring out how to draw a mandala. It's going to be really tough to solve the problem in just one shot, so we're going to have to break it down into smaller problems in order to solve it. This process of solving a complex problem by breaking it down and solving smaller problems is known as problem decomposition. When you're trying to build something that's even remotely complex, it's important to decompose the problem to make it manageable. I'm going to show you guys how to do that in this video. In Thinking Out Loud, Alfie, Betsy, and Gamal do a really good job of giving us hints to figure out the main problem. I'm going to take notes of the important things, and this plan is what's going to help me stay focused on what I need to do. Make sure you read through Thinking Out Loud, because if you just are able to break down the big problem into the problems that each one of them identifies and offers a solution for, you might be able to figure it out without having to watch this video. In fact, you might come up with a different way of solving the entire problem than what I'm going to do. On the screen, I've already simplified what I saw in the lab sheet, and I have it broken down into about six steps. I've brought in a few blocks that we've created previously, such as the polygon making or drawing block, the point block when we created the abstract data type of point, and the X coordinate of and the Y coordinate of blocks. And the way that these work, just to show you guys in case you don't remember, is that it reports back either the first item or the second item of a point, and a point includes an X and a Y. Okay? So just by having these blocks, it's going to make it a little bit easier, and I don't have to waste too much time in creating everything from scratch again. So I'm able to accomplish number one right now, but in number two, it kind of ties into number one, which says while drawing the polygon at each vertex or each point, we want to capture the X and Y coordinates and store those in a list, store those coordinates in a list named polygon points. Make the list a global variable so that any sprite or any script can access it. So let's do that. I'm going to go over to the variables palette and I'm going to make a variable called polygon points which is going to store, I have to make sure that it's for all sprites, and it's going to store a list of every single coordinate as the polygon block is drawing the polygon. So I have to edit that. I'm actually going to have to capture the point as it's drawing it. I think it was Gamal that suggested we use the add block. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the add block to add a specific point. Let me put that in the correct spot. Add a specific point to polygon points as it's going through the polygon drawing process. Now, when do we want to add a point? I should do that before I move and draw a line. So I should have the add block inside of the repeat block just above the move command block. Because if I move first, then I never captured the first point or the first place that the, uh, that the sprite was in. Okay, so now the question becomes, how do we capture exactly where the sprite is on the stage? If I go over to the motion palette, the X position and Y position reporter blocks are able to do just that. They can report the X and Y positions, and I can store those inside of a point, and I can store that point inside of polygon points. And this is going to repeat as many times as there are sides, because that's the input parameter that's going to determine how many adds we're going to do. If I hit apply and I run it right now, well, let me put some inputs here. Let me do a five-sided polygon with a side length of 50. If I run it right now, we get an error. It's expecting a list but getting a number. And I think that has something to do with polygon points right now. Because you guys can see that right now it says polygon points is zero, but we want it to be an, a list. And we want it to be an empty list when we first start, before we draw any polygon. So I have to initialize this variable. And it's a good habit to initialize every variable when you use it, or before you use it. That way, uh, Snap knows what its value should be, or what its type should be. So let me go over to the variables palette, and I'm going to drag the set block as the first line in the polygon block. And the first thing I want to do is I want to set polygon points to a blank list, a list without any items inside of it. And if I just drag it as it is by default, we have a blank item in here, and we don't want that. We just want it to be an empty list. Oops, went the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. So the first thing it's going to do is going to clear out the list. It's going to set it to an empty list, and now we can start adding items to this list. I'm going to hit Apply, and let me run it again. 
and it works. Perfect. So we drew our polygon, and as we drew the polygon, we were able to capture the location of the points. You guys can see in the first item, we are at 0, 0, because that's where the sprite just happened to start. The second item is around 50, 0, okay? And that's the second point. And the third item is about 65, negative 47. So that's the third point, and so on. So we want to be able to go from each point to every other point uh, as we draw lines to create this mandala, right? Let me just hit apply because we've gotten a little bit of the problem done so far. Now let's look at number three. We got to figure out a way to draw a line from one point to another. Okay, perhaps create an abstraction for this. I'm just going to focus on item one and item two right now. So I, have to f I want to figure out how to draw a line from item one of polygon points to item two of polygon points. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my pen over. I'm going to make sure it's up before I draw anything. Uh, let me bring over a pen down because I'm going to have to put it down at some point. And I want to go to, let me go to the first location. Okay, so I want to go to the first item. Okay, so I'm going to have to go over to variables. I'm going to... Let me drag in actually the first item completely. So let me get the item one of polygon points. And if I click it, if I click on this reporter block, it's going to report back zero comma zero, which is perfect, or zero zero in each one of the items inside of that. I know this wording is going to get a little bit tricky, so I'm going to try to be very careful. But what I want to do is I want to go to the x coordinate of this first item. And I want to go to the Y coordinate of this first item, right? So I can make a copy of these and drag them inside of here. And that way I can just get the X value and then I can get the Y value. Okay. Let me just move this down a little bit because it's going to be very similar when I want to draw a line to the second item, which is about 50 comma zero. So instead of being item one of polygon points, I want to be item two of polygon points. So right now I've just created a way to access that value. And the Y coordinate of item two should be zero. Perfect. Now I wanna use these when I draw a line. So I wanna to go to the X coordinate of this and the Y coordinate of that. I wanna put my pen down and then I wanna to go to, now that my pen is down, I wanna to go to the next location. I wanna to go to item two's coordinates and that should draw a line. Let me actually lift up my pen after I do that. So I'm going to do pen up. And this should work, I think. <laughs> Let me uh, bring over the clear bu uh, button so I could uh, clear it. And that didn't reset the polygon. So there's still all the values are still there. Now let me just run this and it should hopefully draw a line. And perfect, we did so. So we're able to draw a line now. Um, let me think. It's said to create an abstraction, so that must mean that I want to put all of this inside of a block. Wow, this is going to get tricky. Uh, well, let's see what happens if we don't use an abstraction. We want to go from the first point to the second. So from the first item to the second item. Then we want to go from the first item. So let me just duplicate all this. We want to go from the first item to the third item right? Okay. Let's see what's next. After that, we want to go from the, we're going to go back to the first item and go then to the fourth item. I'm just doing a, a, a polygon of five sides right now in my head or on screen. So we have to go back to the first item every single time. Then we have to go to the second item, the third item, the fourth item. And lastly, we have to go to the fifth item. So I'm just going to make a copy of all of this again. So let me just duplicate this and just modify in the, the line that we're going to go to. We're going to go to the fifth item. So the X coordinate of the fifth item, the Y coordinate, and that should draw it all. So if I draw each one of these separately, it should draw the lines that would go inside of the mandala. But this is not very efficient. And this is probably why I wrote create some kind of abstraction for this. I have to think about that a little bit more. It's kind of hard to think, speak, and code at the same time. Okay, let's see. I think I've accomplished number four, actually. I started off at the first point, 
and I drew a line to every other point in the list. But right now they're all separate. I had to click on each script separately. So what if I actually start combining them? So let me just uh, bring them in and combine them. I can remove the, the pen up again because we have two of them. And I think that's it. That should do it for this pentagon. So perfect. Uh, actually, it's not perfect because it didn't go back to the first location. Uh, so let me just quickly make a copy of that. I'm going to duplicate that. And I just want the first item at the bottom of this. Okay. Let me get rid of all the extra stuff. When I clear the stage and I draw it, perfect. We just went from the first item, which is zero, zero, and we drew a line to every single other item. But we did it in a really inefficient way. This is not a good way of doing this. I'm going to save that for the next video. So this is going to be a two-parter because otherwise this video is going to end up being 20 or 30 minutes long. So let me break up this video and I'm going to show you guys how to do that in the next video.